Hello and welcome to Nerdarchy. For nerds, by nerds. I'm Nerdarchy Steve and I'm hanging out with these wonderful nerds. We're down to nerd tonight, but they'll be back next week after their house is done being repaired or something. Uh, apparently there's jackhammers going on on the roof right now and it would be very disruptive, unfortunately. So we wish Robin the best with that. But we're going to play some Nobody's Heroes uh, Cypher System RPG Superheroes game run by our illustrious GM, Stephen Partridge. And as always, there's links in the description to follow our players all across the interwebs and stalk them in the good way, not the creepy way. I hand it over to you, GM. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Nobody's Heroes. Uh, this is a Cypher System game. We love some superheroes around here, and we love some Sirenscape. We're using that for our sound effects and our music and all that business. So yeah, if you want to add cool sound effects and music, and you can even build your own sets if you want in there, check it out. It's really cool. Um, also, you'll see we have Croco Giles filling in for Robin. Uh, <laughs> So uh, Croco Giles is over there. We are going to begin with our uh, dice. Actually, I need to use my D4 again because we are down a Robin. So they are not here. So we're doing a D4 if I can find it. I'm gonna roll it and see who's gonna give us their first of the one sentence recaps. That is Dell. Okay. Uh, I found a, a I find a found a uh, crocodile to be my own personal dragon horde in which I swap ciphers and pretty things for raccoons. <laughs> Carnivores unite. Yep. Um, bum, 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 Dave. Now, the way you said that, though, it sounded like you give up ciphers and get raccoons. <laughs> <laughs> Would a Lang say no? Yeah. Probably, yeah. probably not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, David. I'm playing blowhard and uh, I remember us having a romping good time through the sewers and we had to break quite a few things to make it happen including the floor to our kitchen when we were led into a merry chase and basically a circle you know through the city under the city and back into our own kitchen we could have just stayed home honestly he played us he played us <laughs> mm-hmm. yep who are you handing uh, it off I'm going to throw it to Doug Hey, I'm Nerd Dog. I'm playing Nightlight, and yes, uh, he was just—he's been running himself ragged, trying to keep up as uh, what they determined to be former A-lister hybrid. Sort of led them on a astray through the sewers, and uh, and ended up uh, infiltrating uh, the base that we had just gotten, uh, injuring Bombshell very badly. I think. It's, kidnapping Tracy Chapman, we suspect. And that was all just in one day. And now we still have to go uh, to a museum where a potential ancient mummy might do some crime that we have to ruin. And I, with that, I'll pass it off to Nerd Arcus Ted. <laughs> hey, I'm playing Binda, AKA uh, Kiefer Greenleaf, <laughs> meteorologist. So we don't thankfully get into much of his day job life. You know, Doug and Dave and Dell, uh, triple D's over there, much, uh, <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> covered uh, just about everything. I think the only thing that, you know, we didn't mention was the fact that, you know, we are pretty sure that hybrid is kind of confirmed as an alien. And we believe that it's also Walter Mathis. So, like, oh, yeah, there's all kinds of like twisty turns, like connect the the you know the the string lines on the chalkboard kind of deal uh you know it's it's a wild ride we'll see what happens we're all really tired we we definitely had an incident with uh nightlight's mom you know coming, oh, yeah. to, the, coming to you know headquarters yelling at everybody to be like how can you put him in danger no 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 <laughs> So a lot of amusing things, but we're all going to be pretty darn tired and possibly, you know, down some stats before we actually head on into the museum to possibly, as Doug said, confront a mummy. Yep. So uh, with that, uh, the night passes uh, and Katie happened to go home. Katie, your house had a hole in it from yes. um, right. a long incident. So <laughs> what room of the house was that in? My bedroom. Your bedroom, okay. So um, Katie, 
as you wake up, you hear some uh, zzz, and then a little bit of hammering. And you see this uh, huge, like, 6'4", really burly bearded man in your bedroom putting a tape measure back on his belt and he starts hammering uh at uh your wall where the hole was it's now patched up a little bit and your parents are kind of standing there watching and uh your mother comes over and places a cup of your morning beverage of choice on your dresser uh we thought you'd like to sleep in tonight honey or this morning yeah, this is totally not uncomfortable. Oh, hey, uh, hi, uh, Harry Bunyan, and he holds out his hand. Owner <laughs> <laughs> of Bunyan Hardware. I, I see you a lot in the mall. I think uh, that's where our uh, our our setup is. You know. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm just here fixing the wall. Uh, I asked if they wanted me to do this with you here and they insisted and your parents are very forceful people. They are. They are very forceful. She just kind of like gets up and like wraps her doodah around herself. Even though she's like, Katie is like totally dressed in like head to toe pajamas. She's still just like. Mm -hmm. Just shuffles off backwards, picks up the drink, which is like some kind of chia seed, green bird related kind of beverage that she suddenly started craving mm -hmm. ever since she started opening that book and just kind of like backs off into her like out the door and then off to her bathroom. Okay. And your mother just sort of like gives you a big, like, close eyed smile with teeth and waves. And then begins telling the hard, the construction worker exactly what to do where. And she's going to try and get like extra benefits out of it, even though she's not paying for it because mm -hmm. of the insurance. She's still just going to try and haggle. Oh, yes. Like any good Indonesian parent does, there, there is a better price, even if it's free. <sighs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. And you hear she's already very successful because this man seems like a touch flustered with her and her demeanor, her just very almost overbearing demeanor. Um, and your father's just kind of watching and nodding with approval the whole while. Um, and so you get ready for the morning. And, Did uh, I manage to get 10 hours worth of sleep? You managed to get 10 hours worth of sleep? Yes. Okay, uh, you, oh. you you slept in late. Uh, I thought we had to be there in like six and a half hours. Okay, fine. So during that period, I will take my three. Oh, really? But not my fourth, because obviously I didn't get 10 hours. So. Yeah, it can be a rough day. <laughs> yeah, we, we had like six hours from where you know, hybrid got away to oh, get yeah. the next thing. Oh yeah, because it's the middle of the night, that's right. Ooh. So the yeah, event I, is about to start. I expended my 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 one, or my action, my hour, my 10 minutes, but uh, I too cannot use the 10 hour. Yeah, I mean, Leo's gonna hit up that espresso bar at the base big time before, before we I go to the museum. And oh, mechanically that means quad, we- Quad shot with raw sugar and cream. Mechanically, that means that like the our only option is the 10 hour moving yeah. forward, isn't it? Yeah. Because we've mm -hmm. used the other ones, even yep. though it's been a day. Cool. Yep. Yep. So, it feels uh, like we're trapped in an episode of 24 or a season of 24. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what does Kiefer's morning routine look like? Uh, so despite his more- <clears throat> Wake and bake. Oh, like, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Despite his more, you know, laid back scenario, I mean, he he's kind of a speedster, so like he still can kind of get up and do things. Yeah, like, back to uh, You know, it's it's kind of like that <laughs> antithesis of like, all right, I'm gonna do nothing or I'm gonna do everything. Uh, so like, you know, he knows before he went to bed, like, all right, you know, I've only got six hours, so like he gets everything kind of set up and he 
you know, so that he can just get up and begin his day. Uh, so like he he goes hard on the on the bake to go to sleep so that he can get to sleep faster. Uh, but then when he gets up, it's you know up and ready and rousing. As a speech, still a little high from the night before. Still doesn't doesn't really feel yeah. like you know the oh I need coffee because he's always just a bit jittery. So okay, all right. So uh, he's probably you the first up. one ready and a raring to go. Okay, all right. So you're up. This is early. breathing exercises. <laughs> um, Kiefer's already up when uh, Leo gets up then. And uh, what about uh, what about Johnny Silver? What does his morning routine look like? Oh, he gets up at like the crack of dawn and he's got to do his push ups and practice his katas. Does he do it with the rat right, where the sun's coming up on the roof so he can see the silhouette if you're looking? <laughs> you, you know, he he might now that, you know, he's got a, it, you know, his living arrangements have kind of been upgraded. <laughs> okay. Big Johnny right. Silver fan. So, I- uh, IRL. <laughs> The three of you uh, get up and get around. Uh, you notice that uh, a certain bombshell is absent, and you do find a up. note saying that she decided to uh, go get some medical attention. Yeah, did we we called nine one one for her. Yeah, she's she's uh, gonna be staying there for a while. So you've got. Uh, and Magpie will approach the three of you and explain that uh, she really feels like she needs to look into the uh, Walter Mathis incident and scenario and just really delve into this a little bit while the rest of you deal with this museum just in case there's a lead there. Um, since Bob She's got the perfect cover. She got the perfect cover as a villain, but we know we know you're really a superhero, Magpie. Good luck. She. Uh, so- I know that. I know that you were looking forward to kind of scoping out the museum again. You've been there from previous conversations, but uh, you know, we got this covered. If you can handle this Mathis or get more information, the intel, if you will, uh, you might just be able to get two things done at once. She kind of cringes when Leo refers to her as a a villain in disguise or a hero and then um she so looks good at, at you maintaining that cover kind of offers this coy smile and is like it's probably for the best i don't go anyway don't want to missing too much stuff and then uh goes off about her uh skulkery so uh how is katie going to get to everyone else are you all rendezvousing at the museum are you rendezvousing at the tower I believe we're rendezvousing at the museum. I believe we're, is what was discussed. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Is it a tower? It's like a pretty high building. It is a pretty high building. Oh, okay. I didn't realize. I didn't. I, I didn't really think about it. Before, yeah. To be with you. Yeah. She's gonna take public transport. Okay. And I love it's public the same transport. Bus hmm. That that comes up, and it's got like this strange tilt to one side <laughs> where its suspension has been personally damaged and like the doors don't open and shut properly because there's like this big giant like bird shape that was previously there. <laughs> oh yes, there's like a good like bend in the doorway and you see that the person who picks you up actually looks like the same bus driver on the same long shift. Oh boy. Um, also, just... the bus driver almost didn't stop because oh, yeah. Katie is so invisible that um, it was, she was only lucky that someone was running late and they ran up and held the bus next to her and the door almost shuts on her as she gets in. Oh, yes. In fact, this old man with, um, he, he looks like he's dressed in pretty nice clothing, actually, but um, his hair's kind of frazzled. He's got a briefcase and he's uh, like still kind of half tying this bow tie that he's struggling with as he slides in past you. And then it's like, oh, there's a person there. Oh, all right. And he just keeps going. Katie's gonna try something that she has zero skills in because she's inspired by Magpie. Okay. And she's going to try and swipe something off this man as he brushes past her because she's so invisible. Okay. All right, uh, go ahead and make a uh, speed check to try to do something sneaky, stealthy, or otherwise pickpocket. Mm. 
What is the DC? What's the difficulty? What's the DC? That is a good question. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the difficulty uh, is going to be a uh, four. Okay, I have a question because I want to play fair. Is this considered sneaking and staying quiet? Yes. So that's a five. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because apparently she still has that inability even when she's Katie, despite the fact. Okay, so. This is 17. Wow, 17, okay. So you uh, just catch, like as he's hurrying, you kind of just like slip your fingers into his pocket. And uh, you pull out a, uh, actually I'm gonna roll a dice for this for happenstance because a black this guy has lotus a lot magic of different things. <laughs> so uh, do you want high or low? Feeling card. <laughs> do you want high or low? Because it's Katie, I'll go low. Okay. You find a villain card. Mm. One of the calling out villains. Gets out her phone, like uses her book as like a cover, which is really not a good cover because it's like this extravagantly like (laughs) gold leaf lettered, (laughs) Bartik covered giant ancient book. And just like her m- mobile phone just kind of sneaks up. But just... Does he get off at the museum? <gasps> he does get off at the museum. In fact. Uh, and he's got his bow tie correct now. You see he's also got this, uh, he- he's got a pair of glasses that he's fumbled out of his briefcase and everything else. Um, And go ahead and also give me an intellect roll with a difficulty of five to notice something. I'm just still like. At least the villains make it easy. 19. 19. You see something shiny and golden just glint a little bit in the briefcase. Like Um, really nice gold. Katie is going to like send the photos to um, Nightlight. Okay. To see if he, and say, can you put this through the computer to see if the computer pings this person as anyone? I found a villain. I, I'm like, Magpie would be so proud. I did this. Da, 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 da. And then she like takes a photo of the villain card and like sends it all to Nightlight to see if he can like do some smart stuff. Okay, so uh, Nightlight, your buddy from school, your science project partner just sent you a whole mess of text messages that have, I don't know, probably caps somewhere in there, definitely pictures. How much time would there be between then and when we have to be at the museum? Uh, Like, it is, like, you are on your way right now. Oh, all right. I'll tell. Are we? To, are we? Are we? How are we getting there? Can I ride on the no, the are you blowhard? The, the blowhard mobile again? Do we have access to the computer as we roam? I don't know. Not yet. Hmm. Are we going? I, I forget. Did we just we we talked about? Are we going in costume and sneaking it around to keep an eye, or as our civilian civvies? I imagine you guys would have arranged that. So if you want to talk about it real quick now, you can. I, th- I thought we did. I, just I thought remember. there was something about, was it Katie's mom that was doing the catering? Yes. Oh, or was wow. it Nightlight's mom doing catering? Somebody's mom Nightlight's was doing mom. catering. It was, it was Nightlight's mom. It was Nightlight's oh, was it? Mom. Yeah. Yeah, yeah oh. your mom is trying to start an upstart catering business. Oh. Okay. Um, I, you found out when she came to yell at you. That's yep. right. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Katie's mom is busy uh, negotiating a better deal on her wall fixing from this poor hardware man who is completely unsuspecting. Poor Harry Bunyan. Yeah. yeah. He, he would have done uh, other home repairs in the house and then walked away feeling like really good and didn't understand why he feels like he's less better off after walking away. <laughs> Yeah. I feel for that. I feel for that guy so bad. My dad always haggled with everybody. For Harry Bunyan? 
A little do you yes. know, Harry Potter is our next villain. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because. <laughs> No, he'd be so embarrassed. I'm like, why are you doing that? He's like, they don't respect you unless you haggle. <laughs> it's like, no, they just think you're an a-hole. <laughs> Actually, with how much you guys spend time in the mall, hmm. uh, go ahead and uh, anyone who wants to can make a quick little intellect check with a difficulty of five to see if you already know this guy. What a turn. <laughs> so you don't know him. That's a six. If he doesn't, if he doesn't do karate, you know he's probably. I got an eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. Uh, and Kiefer, I presume you're not rolling. Yeah, I. Okay. So, uh, Leo, you actually do know. Uh, Harry is um, one of the two owners of this hardware shop. He uh, owns the place with his husband. Uh, who uh, has a thick Canadian accent. <laughs> you can just say um, Paul. Paul? Is this, is this Paul? Um, no, uh, you've only ever Wordy. heard- Wordy. It's Wordy Bunyan. To by Harry as babe. But um, uh, yeah, you. Uh, so you don't actually know his name. Sure. He's, just, he's like an also very big, very broad guy with like black hair pulled back in a ponytail. You know, just like the, these are the kind of guys that you would expect to run a hardware store sort of thing. Um, you know, lots of flannel, lots of jeans, that kind of thing. You know, denim everywhere. Hardware so, store uh, or lumberjack. It was really their only paths, like path <laughs> options. I like flannel. I like checkered shirts. So what was that was I supposed to I be? mean, the lumberjack <laughs> was my other hero option. So. <laughs> so uh yeah you, you you've met them before they're nice okay. guys they're very like earnest um they're they're actually very domestic and like to like focus on helping people with home repairs and like advising what would be best in their shop that kind of thing mm -hmm. so um yeah uh so you actually know of this guy but uh okay. You guys are on your way. Uh, are you taking your motorcycle blowhard or are you going in plain clothes? Uh, motorcycle. Okay. Are you going in plain clothes or your? Uh, you, you know, I imagine I've got like something on the. Uh, you know, I get night like to rig up an illusion for me if I can. Sure. Yeah, to absolutely. Make my bike oh. look like a normal bike and not the blowhard heart mobile. Okay. Yes, I will use my illusion powers to do that. Uh, you want to just mask? Yeah, I can make it look like whatever you want. Well, it'll, just look, it'll just like look like a more like regular version of it. Okay. You know, without the 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 hero iconic iconography. Gotcha. If you really wanted to troll him, <laughs> you would like because you're a young person, you'd make it like a crotch rocket, like instead of <laughs> like. <it? laughs> like <laughs> Yeah, I'll make it. I'm, I, I, I respect Johnny Silver and Blair. I'll make it look like I, I'll put his the Iron Wolverine logo like on the gift thing. Ooh, very cool, very cool. You actually turn a couple heads when you do that, so like people just kind of admiring your. Always be uh, hustling, Mister Silver. Always be hustling. Um, so the two of you get. I'll take there. the bus because I love public transport. <laughs> Leo, are you uh, are you, so you're wearing your wait. Uh, suit or no? Wait, 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 wait! I have to think about this. It's my, my. You know what? Screw it! I'm going in my suit. There's okay. there's bigger there's bigger things at play. I'm up, my mom's catering business won't get very far if a mummy destroys the place. So okay. I'll deal with that when I get to it. But I will mm. I will use my suit and try to clandestinely get a, a, from the base to there using my distortion power, which makes me just like a blurry indistinct blat. Okay. So I'll just walk down the street like that, but like duck behind stuff on the way. Okay. All right. Uh, what about Kiefer? How are you getting there? So he'll, he'll zoom on in. You know, he pretty much, you know, runs everywhere unless he has to make it look like he's being normal. Uh, and mm -hmm. he's fully planning to be able to bounce back and forth between, you know, normal clothes and hero, hero clothes. But, you know, Okay. <laughs> easy for him easy enough for him to do um but you're like recognizable even your in your regular clothes yeah mm -hmm. it's true yeah um in fact uh when you get there you do see that uh one of your co-workers who often begrudges being pigeonholed into working on the weekend events um is currently reporting out front 
for the uh, for their grand uh, this grand unveiling of this new uh, exhibit showing the newly discovered uh, King Two T Fruity, and um, so you get there. Are you entering through the main entrance or through the roof, Kiefer? Oh, I'll I'll you know. Did we get badges or access in any way, shape, or form? Walter did actually give you guys those. Oh, well, then I'll totally just, you know, plain clothes and go through the front door like I'm supposed to be here. Okay. All right. And you see that everyone seems to be wearing, like, proper finery at this place, like tuxedos. There are gowns. This thing, even though it's starting in the early afternoon, it's supposed to go until after dark. There, It's being catered. Um, you uh, see that there is this uh, woman in a minivan off to the side, unloading like stacks of these trays of food. Um, the woman who bears a weird resemblance to your uh, your recently made friend Leo, actually. We know exactly who this is. We didn't we you know see them seven hours ago. Were you <laughs> were you yelled at? Were you part of the being yelled at? I, I, don't, I don't know. I think, yeah, she got a tour of the place. She probably saw him. So, yeah, you, you would know this is Leo's mom catering the event right now. Um, and uh, it looks like, uh, Leo, it looks like your mother has roped a few of your cousins into helping. Good. So uh, she's got help. She's They're all wearing like these really nice sort of uh, white tuxedos. Um, they even have like little gloves on. So oh, it's yeah. like super <laughs> fancy. Uh, what, um, uh, what, what kind of kit, like, I don't know if we get too technical, but like, is it all pre-made stuff or are they cooking stuff there? Um, it is largely stuff that was made in your house. Okay. So um, a lot of it is pre-made at this point. And uh, they're setting up. Um, you pull up Johnny Silver on your bike. Do they have any? Do they have any kind of equipment that uses electricity at all? Uh, that they yes. need. Yeah, they have. They have um, like some electric warmers. They have some of them that are like built up with those little gas. Uh, okay. Oh, the, yeah, yeah. That have Amy. fire that come up, all that sort of thing. Then I am going to use my distortion ability, which is free now because my edge to sort of just blur myself. And I'm going to install the electronic gizmo booster, which is what I call that cipher that I've been carrying around for like five sessions onto the, whatever's powering that just to give them a little extra juice. Basically. Okay. All right. Very cool. So do you yeah. want to put extra juice on a cooking <laughs> item? Just well, I'd imagine a cipher, a, using it, a cipher is not going to be a bad thing for me. So. Yeah. Yep. Nope, it is actually, uh, it runs really smoothly and it attaches pretty easily. It's interesting. Um, it just kind of like attaches and then you see this sort of like net of electricity weave mm. over the whole thing and then just starts running like normal. I smile under my mask and distort myself away. Okay. Um, Johnny Silver, <laughs> you arrive on this motorcycle <laughs> and uh, you see that once again, there's people entering here and they all look like they're dressed up in some finery. It's almost like an art gala here. It's a little bit crazy. Um, you gonna get it valet parked? Uh, huh? Is he gonna, you gonna get it valet parked? No, no, I'm gonna <laughs> park it with, with all the uh, with all the other workers and employees. Uh, <laughs> then I'm gonna go in and look for Mrs. Uh, Lampley and uh, hey, ma'am, um, you know, Leo said you needed help. Oh, uh, yes, if you want to help, of course. Uh, go out there and get a stack of trays. Uh, those little sandwich ones, you know, with the wrap and it's like a swirl. Uh, they're called pinwheels. Go get those. Mm. I'm going to get one of those and do what I'm, which, which she asked, but I'm definitely going to eat one when no one's looking. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, you I can want easily wheels. do that and make a uh, mic check to see how well you carry this. <laughs> what is the challenge? Uh, the challenge is only a three. Only a three? Well, well I have an edge of three, so that makes it a two. That's a nat 20. <laughs> Ooh, okay, so um, you can Being the whole track or what? <laughs> impressively, in fact. How do? You, what would you like to happen as a result of this twenty? Uh, I think he just grabs two trays, you know, and has got one in one hand, in each hand, and is just kind of like going around offering people. You know, uh, you know, he's trying to be a little bit inconspicuous because you know he's undercover. Mm-hmm. 
Of course, of course. And uh, you managed to stay completely under the radar while impressing everyone, which is a very rare thing. Um, the bus pulls up and this man uh, stands with his briefcase clasped close to his chest as he sort of shuffles toward the exit of the bus and then uh, gets out just on the sidewalk outside the parking lot. He walks across the broad lot and into this uh, really interestingly shaped building that you know is shaped that way to accommodate different exhibits. Um, he kind of climbs up this staircase and it zigzags back and forth and he gets into the entrance of this lobby. Um, then he disappears unless you're staying with him. And he like just gets out of the bus in time as the door shut. Um, and she puts a like finger to her ear and is all like, Nightlight. What the is villain it? has is entering the building in the lobby. I thought the mummy was the villain. There's a second villain? Did you not read my text messages and see I was the pictures? Trying to stay inconspicuous on the way here. I'm here right now. I got on a bus and I picked I was like trying to be like Good for guy. you. Public transport. And yeah, really I pickpocketed rank. some and he had a villain he had a villain card. Look at the phone, there's photos. Keep an eye All on right. him. And I'll, I'll, all right, I'm like, all right, I'm going to tell the others and, I'm, and I'll, I'll, descri- I'll I'll send those to, those two. Johnny Silver, like, hey, Katie spotted, there's a secondary villain here. He's got a gray suit, briefcase, blah, 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 whatever you just said. If I That's see him, cool. I want to go over to him with one of the trays. Oh, nice. Okay. So um, as you're Super kind of navigating scary. this massive open area of the museum, you see the help desk is still being operated, but more so at like a uh, functional basis. There are tables set up sort of all around this uh, massive T-Rex skeleton that exists just in the middle of the whole lobby. And it's like hanging by these threads and it is just impressive as all get out. You see there's artwork depicting different moments in history kind of hanging around this octagonal space with like three balconies stacked on top because the entryway is almost like a column that leads to other exhibits. Mm. And, uh, so you managed to navigate your way around with the food and whatnot. Make an intellect check with the difficulty of four to try to perceive this specific man. All right, I will spend in order to try and find them to get it down okay. to a three. It's a 16. Yes. Johnny Silver on the spot. Okay, so um, you notice, in fact, this shifty looking man sort of like holding this briefcase and he looks around and he goes into a side area um, that looks like it's meant for employees or there's also a restroom back there. Am I able to cut him off before he kind of gets out of the crowd? Make a speed check. Difficulty Blow. five. Blow him off his feet. <laughs> <laughs> Just like one master lit. <laughs> <laughs> what if I use my power to pull? Pull. Okay. I suck in in his direction to kind of slow him <laughs> down. Okay, um, so he does the move. That you can make your might check. However, you have a uh, hindrance. Uh, is it called a hindrance? I think it's called a hindrance. I think so. Um, because you're trying to do so stealthily without being discovered. Okay. And what is my? What is the? What is? What is the oh, challenge? Wow. I'm sorry. The challenge starts at a five, so it becomes a six with your difficulty. <laughs> okay. Um, I already have an edge, so that'll go down by one to a five. Mm-hmm. And I will spend to get it down to a four. Okay. And I rolled a four, so that's not going to do it. <laughs> oh, all right. And in fact... Uh, I'm going to insert a GM intrusion here. So, All right. So would that mean your suck sucked? It did. <laughs> Someone switched me from suck to blow when I wasn't looking. <laughs> I wanted to see that guy do the moonwalk. Both of you get an experience for the puns. <laughs> but then also, Dave, you get an extra experience because you are affected and you can give one to someone else. Uh, 
you know what? I will give it to Dell. Okay. Yay. So uh, that means Katie, you're gonna see as Johnny ducks into the like kind of around the corner and does this sucking thing, and you see that the man notices. Who's you've been doing. made. You've been made. You've been made. You've been made. And <laughs> also, you see, uh, you see what looks like a uh, maybe it's a mummy just going around that corner. Down so, the question: way. Like, I failed to use my suck power on him, uh -huh. uh, which I was trying to use to make my speed check easier. Can I still make the speed check? Um, you can still make the speed check. All right. Uh, that's a 10. Not going to do it. Nope. So, yeah, you are at the end of the hall, and you see that whatever this mummy creature at the end of the hall was doing, they get passed without any sort of chance for interruption. And they are but now we have two players on the board. this door of, yeah. that says employees only. Mm, and so you also now have this man wearing a suit who looks at you, scowls and then ducks into the same door that says employees only before you can get to him. We have mummy sighting. Trust me, <laughs> folks. I had a plan and it was absolutely brilliant. <laughs> These are dance really villains. Don't, don't, hurt. I don't blame you. <laughs> well, Dave, we have two bogeys. We have two bogeys. Katie's getting way too into this. Two bogeys, two bogeys. <laughs> <laughs> As you've told me many times, Dave, sometimes a dice no. Sometimes a dice no. Well, you've got two two villains on you. That's a lot for anybody to handle, Blowhard. Yeah, unexpected. Katie slides past and can and follows them. Okay. Um, hoping that they will not notice her slash have focused too much on him. I was I was not trying to you know take away from the scene, uh, but I was you know in and around mingling. Is there any chance that you know? As the the chatter is going off in the, in the ears, would I be able to like at this point in time look and see the direction you know in the direction yes. that's all going? Yep. In fact, you don't even have to roll for it because Blowhard failed so much that there's even a couple people they felt the breeze coming out. They don't know quite what's going on, but they kind of Someone looking farted. around now. And a lot of them are starting to train on him. He fought it at a gala. <laughs> and all right, so I don't know what's around. Okay, but so, would I be able to stealthily and quickly cause a distraction in another direction? Sure. Um, so there are paintings that are hanging overhead on these eight sides of this room. You see, the gift shop is kind of off to the left. This corridor that uh, Blowhard is going towards is off to the right. There are two branching hallways that go towards the front and kind of off in other directions based on what wall they're on that you would imagine is kind of starting and ending the circuit of the museum. Well, I mean, and there's a big T-Rex in the center of it all. So is there like an object that I can kind of toss to have it, you know, bounce off a couple of walls or something um, and just, just kind of give it a quick toss so that it makes noise to just direct people's attention another way but not to at anyone in particular including myself sure what are you what are you tossing it's a t-rex <laughs> uh, i'm not gonna toss the t-rex or, or at the t-rex uh but like that's what I'm, I'm looking for something small around me okay um somebody dropped a quarter all right so what am i making uh, you are going to make a uh, speed check with a difficulty of five. All right. So I get three. That'll bring it down to a two. Um, this wouldn't and count as as initiative, right? Nope. Right. So difficulty two. It's going to be a 12 on the die. So. Okay. So ping and you kind of give it that extra little with your wind power. And when you do it pings away from you. And I'm going to insert a GM intrusion here. Mm -hmm. So you get a intrude, intrude, intrude. And give one to someone else. Uh, all right. Well, Dave got one. Del got one. So this one's got to go to Doug. Oh, thanks. All right. The quarter pings off of the T-Rex skull. No. Oh. And outward and ricochets toward one of the hanging pictures. And 
it actually, you notice now that the wires on one of these pictures was not super stable in the first place and it knocks the wire out of place and off of the hook as it jostles it. And all of a sudden the picture falls part way. So it's only hanging by one of its two corners that it was hanging <gasps> on. Starts oh. swinging and hitting all the other pictures that start hitting one another in right. this almost domino oh effect. And everyone starts gasping and screaming. Pearls are being clutched. <laughs> Men are racing frantically. And like people that are running the event start shouting. You hear um, a very pointed curse come from the woman running the catering that may make you gasp, Leo, depending on how your experience with your mom goes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you uh, see that it is suddenly frantic. Like everyone is like crazy, just all over the place. All right, and well. This Immediately time. make an illusion uh, uh, with my minor illusion power uh, to the nearest exit with like neon lights to like direct people to, you know, to like, you know, just so they see it more clearly, like exit and like put like lines so that they can follow them. It's not okay. super huge, but that's what I, that's what I do. Um, it's bigger than intended, but distraction caused. So I will use that distraction to my advantage, and I will totally like zip and try to follow bad guys while costuming up. Cool. Okay, uh, give me a speed check. This does relate to initiative. All right. So. Um, it's going to be a difficulty of six. Six. All right. That's we're going to bring it down to a two. A two. On the cam, I say, "Awesome distraction window. I got this." Seventeen. Seventeen. So uh, you. Because you had the edge, right? So that's what brought it down significantly? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. In that case, you make it, and you are costumed up by the time you burst through. Uh, Winda actually blows past Katie and blow hard. Uh, and you just smell this faint, like, skunky sweet smell on the wind as it just... <laughs> right past you and you uh, make your way through this door. You find yourself in a locker room and uh, you hear a locker slam shut and feet racing. Okay, can I figure out what direction it's coming from? Um, you absolutely can because it's a locker room. Uh, so it's coming from deeper in uh, near the shower area. All right, I'll hastily move in that direction. Okay, so you rush in that direction um, and I am going to just really go all in on these GM intrusions yeah, yeah. at this point. So you get an experience and give one to someone else. Uh, I'm gonna go full circle. I'll give this one to Dave. Okay, uh, so Blowhard, you are the one that notices as uh, Winda blasts through the door and you hear the thunk, 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 as when uh, you smash into a curtain of what are like mascot suits. There's like a dinosaur. There's like a, uh, there's uh, this Real classy friend stuff. of learning that is like wearing a scholarly hat and otherwise looks like a smiley emoji with arms and legs. You see like, there's just all these mascot costumes. Are just you talking like a curtain. In the inflatable kind or like, you know, the furry kind? The furry kind, the ones that are like really like thick and heavy. And so you just smash directly into that curtain. Oh, jeez. So, Katie would uh, like to try something because she snuck in there after them as well. Okay. Before the villain manages with the suitcase, manages to use the suitcase with a hoodie up, Katie would like to try and simultaneously grab the suitcase mm -hmm. while pressing her book into her chest. Mm-hmm and rip the suitcase away from him. Okay, so you don't see the villain right now. Okay. But you do see Winda also smash into this curtain of costumes that are now like thunking and making these hollow jostling noises as they hit one another. Um, there's definitely a, uh, a horse with a rider in there that's meant for like two people. There's all kinds of crazy stuff and they're like labeled like Penny the Pioneer and you know, uh, Terrence T-Rex and all that sort of stuff. Just ridiculous names uh, 
that are all labeled and some of them have like notes attached to them like samantha i know you took my eyeballs or things like that um <laughs> you and, bitch <laughs> uh, are, so like are, is there like people in these things or are, like no, are they they're just, just big basically there is a curtain rack of suits this person okay. walked all around right. it and went through the shower area you couldn't have known it was here sure. and just smashed headlong into them so you right. are slowed down functionally because of it sure sure I, I was just afraid that i was hurting people by like speeding through them but i will oh, no 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 this is like <laughs> you a go place through them <laughs> they turned to red mist <laughs> oh no 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 people just come here to mascot costumes and like these notes are things like apparently people are sabotaging one another's costumes or something it's just all speaking of eyeballs of penny the pioneers are in your pocket so instead katie like looks down at the mascots and then goes ah and like puts the book into her chest and almost from the if you if a camera switched to the other side of where the mascots all fell down. Uh -huh. Katie's so short you can't see her over the mascots, but then slowly from like this graveyard of mascots that Winda has created, <laughs> Elen kind of like grows up and is all like, picks up Winda. Uh huh. And like steps over the mascots and like throws him in front of her to get him to help maintain his speed. Okay, you'll need to make a mic check for that. Cool, I have I'm an advantage of throwing. I am skilled in throwing large objects. Of Does course. Winda count as a large object? <laughs> he does count as a large object. And also I'm doing another hey. DM intrusion because we're all about that experience. You're literally objectifying him. <laughs> and uh, here's the deal. You, when you emerge out of this mascot pile, Terrence T-Rex's head is firmly lodged on your head at the moment. So <laughs> you actually can't see very well. And so you toss him and you need to make a might check with a difficulty of five. But no. also, uh, if you roll a natural one, window will be thrown straight into a brick wall. Okay, so I have two edges from strength automatically. So okay. that brings it down to a three and I am skilled at throwing large objects. So that brings it down to a two. Okay. So nine and above, six. no, six and above. Uh-huh. If just I roll, roll a one, one, I'm truly meant to roll a one. <laughs> 18! Hey! Hey! Right. So you toss Winda. Winda, you fly easily through the showering area. Johnny Silver, you see this happening. Uh, and Nightlight, you're coming in as well. Uh, oh, no, I'm making sure the people are. Did you say those oh, things were falling down? down? Yeah, um, this no, battle happened. they're not falling like... down. They're just hitting one another and swinging back and forth. No, uh, I misunderstood. Okay, I thought they were like crashing down all around the people. No, not crashing down. Just look like they could and are very frightening for that reason. Oh. All right. Am I still wearing the T-Rex head? Uh, you aren't wearing the T-Rex head because Elong is stuck with the T-Rex head. Okay, all right, so I misunderstood. I thought you said I was wearing it and I was being thrown with it. So, all right, my apologies. Yeah, I thought that. Yes, so um, in that case, I'm gonna put a pause on this super quick. Nightlight, what are you doing then? I misunderstood then. I, I wouldn't have made a big show, but I thought people were like in mortal danger there. Oh, no, they're not in mortal danger. They're all just gasping and frantic, but oh. they're fine and not necessarily going to be harmed. Then I would use the chaos to try and get over and follow window, but I'm moving pretty slow. Okay. He's not feeling great. Okay. So you actually come into the locker room right as you see this Elong with a T-Rex head on throwing Winda into a shower area. Oh my gosh. Is everybody all right? We got two uh, bogeys. We got two bogeys. This, this like <laughs> giant like T-Rex head going, two bogeys. Mostly uh, one of I don't know what a bogey is. <laughs> Oh, you saw the tray of pinwheels. That's right. Two trays. I set them down. I'm going to eat another one and be like, dude, your mom is a really good cook. And I will begin changing into blowhard. Okay. You ate one. You mean the woman out there doing <laughs> catering that doesn't, isn't related to me at all? <laughs> yes, that woman that showed up <laughs> at our headquarters. Yes. <laughs> well, there's two villains in here, too. Oh, yeah, that's right. 
<laughs> Thanks. Um, so, Thanks, Mr. Blowhard. <laughs> Blowhard, you ate one of the pinwheels. I ate two of the pinwheels at this point. So you re- you get you regain your action recovery. Ooh. Well, I'm just gonna roll. Uh, cool. So yeah, by the way, all of your mom's hors d'oeuvres are ciphers. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> She's Amazing. a very good cook. She's really good. Uh, she's, so, a, she's a superhero and didn't even know it. <laughs> so, um, when, when I get He's my superhero. I just kind of like take it and, and fly. Okay. Uh, am I able to, you know, catch up, see anything? Um. So, in fact, uh, you do manage to emerge. You go through this double door and you realize this double door immediately like, and you kind of run into this carpeted wall that's covered in like black carpet. And you realize you're in like this hallway outlet and you see there's a curtain at the end, just off to the right. Like this is a hidden space. Um, I don't want to presume, but are you going to go through the curtain or are you going to wait for meals? I'm going to slow down. Uh, I'll, you know, kind of whisper into the end of the mic. Hey, you know, well, you know, I'll just briefly describe what you just said to me and I'll, uh, I'll just kind of see if I can hear them before kind of moving forward. So, um, you hear almost what sounds like cicadas in the summertime a little bit. And you feel the hairs standing up on the back of your neck, and that's about it. It's almost too quiet. I think about mummies and bugs. They have, they, it, uh, scarabs are often associated with uh, ancient and Egyptian culture. They're kind of beetles, be, beetly bugs. Scarab. Why do you ask? So what? I'm sorry, Ted. I I just you know I said it into the mic. You know, it it sounds sounds like cicadas, and I'll kind of you know continue creeping around, try to see if I can see anything. Uh, I would follow after window. This, I mean, you know, you come through this curtain, and you find yourself in a uh in a uh an an exhibit the exhibit is depicting like prehistory you see some uh cavemen statues off to the right and uh you now hear what sounds like shuffling and fluttering paper paper man Uh, off to the right i'll move in that direction all right um, you move in that direction. You see these uh, these dinosaur statues, this uh, these fossils that are on stands on pedestals, and everything else is cast in this sort of eerie uh, half light with some colored reds and greens for effect. The fake plants cast shadows that move on the walls because right now this area isn't meant to be entered in, but it's still setting an atmosphere and. Uh, you are the only one currently back here in the exhibits. And you sort of round this corner uh, that that explains like the different parts of prehistory. And you see this just pile of loose leaf paper all over the ground. Anything suspicious about it? Make an intellect check to investigate. Difficulty four. They're all easy whiters. One. How many? And zigzag. And zigzag. Uh, you, know, you said four, right? Hmm? So I brought it brought it down to a three. It's an 11, so nine. 11. Okay. Um, in fact, uh, this, uh, this paper has blood stains on it. And... Hey. After just a minute, you recognize that the blood stains, because you have a little bit of PTSD about this, they're 
the blood stains are in the same corner that you found some of the other blood stains where your boss was murdered. So papers from his desk? Yeah, when you start reading them, they look like stuff from his desk. Uh, folks, what if the... recommend you might get up here right quick. Looks like uh, whatever's going on here is related to the, the break-in at the weather station and a slitting of one uh, new station manager's throat. In there like a flash. Okay. Do you actually flash when you enter? No. <laughs> I, I was following behind him anyway, but no, I just rushed in. Okay, you rush in. Um, there were two, about two directions, weren't there? Hmm? There were two directions, weren't there? Like the For window. where? When we, you come through the double doors, there was um, like the curtain and there was another direction. Um, there were just the, the, the other direction will lead you back out to the screaming panic okay, hallway. Cool. So yeah, I'll just. You, you would uh, be able to put together that this hallway that you entered through, this sort of secret hallway, is where they send the mascots to enter through to start interacting with the kids. And because it's designed to accommodate mascot costumes that are all sorts of weird shapes and sizes, it's big enough for you to fit through pretty comfortably. Good times, good times. Um, what, well, what we about? know that one of them's a villain. Do we, are we, do we know that the mummy's a villain? We're pretty sure. We were pretty sure. Uh, we... As I'm standing there with Winda and he says that to me, I'm gonna make an illusion in the air of just words. So, cause I don't want to say this out loud. And it says, do you think the paper is the villain? And I like look I'm, down at the like, you know. I'm picking up the paper and I'm, I'm oh. reading it, you know, trying to ascertain whatever clues I can. Obviously it was, if it was brought from the office here, there's something, there's something in this, in this, did you say, did, Stephen? Did you say the blood on the paper was in the same place, like the blood on mm -hmm. the paper? Yeah, yeah. So then, if you're holding the papers, then I'll, then I'll say it out loud. Then I'll just say, do you think it's possible that the paper is the killer? I don't think so. I mean, we've seen stranger stuff. Can you maybe this paper transforms into a, some sort of person, or somebody has control of paper? Death by a thousand paper cuts. I'll wave the paper around. Is it? Is anything suspicious about it? Just I will. I I just for shiggles. I will create like a cloud of scintillating lights and try to mesmerize and mind read the paper, the sheaf of paper, just, just okay. in case, man. There's aliens. I don't know. All right. All right. What does that doing ability it. do? Can you help guide me through? Sure. <clears throat> I can read the surface thoughts of a creature within short range, even if the target doesn't want me to. I must be able to see the target. Once I have established contact, I can read the target's thoughts for up to one minute. If me or the target move out of range, the connection is broken. Okay, because, so you have to see them. Yeah, it does cost me. Even with my okay. edge, still costs two. Into okay. All right, go ahead and uh, use that ability then. Um, when you All do... Right. There is, uh, th you can read the surface thoughts of Winda. You kind of turn, you can read the surface thoughts of Elang, whatever those might be. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> <laughs> and you can read the surface it's, thoughts It's a of... specific, it's only a specific type. It's, it's oh, like it's I only one, okay. I'm just choosing the bundle of sheaf of bloody okay. paper. Okay, in that <laughs> case, you don't spend your points okay. because you don't really, you kind of start to activate it and you can't, you can't quite get it to latch on. Okay. Like there's nothing there yeah, to right. gotcha. grab. Gotcha. So it is just inanimate paper. And then I tell Linda that it's like, um, I think it's just regular paper. Make an intellect roll though with, with a difficulty of seven. Seven? Uh-huh. <laughs> Meanwhile, Johnny Silver, are you in the room? Yeah, I, I was making my way in that direction. Okay, and are you in your superhero garb or your- stuff Yeah, I changed into my superhero garb, so. Okay. But it took me a little bit of time. Okay. Is it Lang pertaining to knowledge, science, knowledge or science at all? Very loosely knowledge. Okay. Yeah, never mind. 
Uh, nope, didn't get it. Okay. So, uh, yeah, you feel okay. like there's not really anything there to grab onto sure. or latch onto. Um, gotcha. Elang would like to. When did this appear? Elang would like to, like, stand there for a minute and then just, like, close its eyes. And all of a sudden, its face kind of gets more animalistic and it wants to, like, take in a deep breath and try and track where the person went from here. Okay, with your scent? Yep. Make an intellect roll. The difficulty for this is, is it defined by your ability roll? Nope. Okay, I will assume the difficulty is related to whatever you're trying to track then. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna have you make two, there's two different difficulties here then. Mm -hmm. One of them is a seven, and the other is a nine. <laughs> okay. Juicy. That's so good. I would, and I can only use two effort, I mean, two, ed, two effort, right? Yeah. That's the max mm -hmm. effort I can use at the yeah. moment. So I can't get the nine down to something useful. Mm -hmm. However, I will spend. I will give three. you an edge on the nine because of the paper. Okay. I will then. So that brings it down to eight. I will then spend two effort, which is six, right? Mm -hmm. so that makes an it asset. Five. Not an edge, an asset on it. So can more. my X ray goggles help? Cash no, your x-ray got, well, actually, yes, they would. Yes, they would. I lied. Yes, they would. They would give you another asset if you want to do that. Ooh, x-ray goggles. Okay, this is actually what I'm going to do on the nine. Okay. Sorry, was it, you giving me the edge on the nine or was that? You, you have, you have, a, you have two assets on the one roll. There are two different difficulties to make. So functionally, it's now become a five and a seven. Well, I will spend. With just. Then I will spend asset. one effort. One effort. Bring it down to a six. Which so makes a four that. and a six. And then. I would like to auto succeed. Thank you. Oh. Okay. So, with your goggles and uh, your with your goggles and your sense of smell and everything, you catch a whiff of this paper and you recognize the scent on the paper. It is the scent of the reporter who interviewed you guys yesterday morning about your paper, success. Paper man. And you see the image of paper man through the wall. As he, he is controls paper. There. You also catch the whiff of another creature. Someone you, at first, it's difficult to recognize and pinpoint. And then you realize that you have smelled this, uh, you've smelled this smell before, this person, recently on the bus. <laughs> and when you turn to follow that scent, you see on top of the ceiling, like I put a oh. link in the chat for you guys to see it. Ooh. There is a golden armored beetle humanoid that beetle skitters human. inside this open vent that it seems that they've opened. And you see that the vent is on the floor, actually. And they skitter into the air ducts. Um, Elang is all like, golden scarab man, and points up to the vents because she can't get in those vents. They're like super like it's the man from the bus. Is it person sized vents or yeah. well I'll fly up and go after him. Oh, and he went into like, the vent? So, Is that what you said? He, he, he went into the vent? I didn't... Uh, yeah. He, the okay. the beetle person skittered into the vent. Into the vent. Okay. okay. Also, gotcha. Paperman is in the next exhibit over. Oh. Um, 
And then with her T-Rex head on, <laughs> using the advantage of the advantage of being bigger, which gives her auto like uh, edges on intimidation rolls. Mm-hmm. And I would like to argue that the, the dinosaur head helps. She kind of like just walks over to where Paper Man is hiding uh-huh. and like looms over at 12 feet tall and just like tilts her head and then grabs him by the scruff of the neck and picks him up and brings him back to everybody else. Okay. Um, so uh, you poke your head in. He sees you and his eyes get real big for a second. And then uh, when you go to reach for him, I need you to make a might check with a difficulty of nine. <laughs> okay. He's paper boy, no more. <laughs> If boy was only difficult to pack. So, I have... Powerful. All my bloody edges when she's big and strong. Man. The water. So she has... A six edge in that brings it down to a difficulty of three holy (laughs) smokes because she's big (laughs) yeah because she starts off with two and then she gets plus two and then her upgrade gives her another plus two wow nine that's exactly what you need. So you ju- he just starts to book it and you grab hold of him and you pick him up and then he just kind of starts laughing. And you see that there are, in this room, it's actually a uh, exhibit about ancient Japan. And you see these scrolls all over the place and he starts moving his hands around and the scrolls and different things start flying off of the wall and constructing into these humanoid figures wielding two blades of paper each. Paper cuts! <laughs> cool. And oh, we're cool. we're gonna roll initiative. You <clears throat> should team up with Lemon Juice, man. Ouch. <laughs> and the, the Salter. Are we all, we all rolling initiative? Yep. Okay. What is the DC? Oh. The challenge. Uh, so, Paper Man has a difficulty of nine, and the yeah. Scarab has a difficulty of seven. So that's going to put them in the order at a twenty-seven and a uh, twenty-one. I got a ten. So, going in that direction, uh, I go just just beyond Paper Paper Man. I have a, I, I have a fourteen, but I have four levels automatic on initiative. Holy wow. Okay. I so, beat a four. Uh, when Dove goes. Man, he is fast. Then Paper Man? <laughs> then who? Come on, man. <laughs> it's well, I rolled it. I rolled yeah, a nat 20. I'm sorry? <clears throat> I rolled a nat 20, but I also have a hindrance. Okay. So we'll say that puts you above the scarab. So you can you can make it above the first one. Oh, and um, I will give um, uh, what Dave about, uh, the extra XP from my auto. My auto. You know what? And you have I'm a actually going to use that now to put you below the scarab. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm a jerk like that. Look, look, look. Did I just so. totally mash a whole bunch of mechanics? Yes. Is that totally fair? Yeah. <clears throat> I'll wear that. Um, so what about uh, Blowhard? What did Blowhard get? Oh, I beat a I beat a four. Okay. So I have a thirteen, so I beat a challenge four. So I'm probably at the bottom of the heap. Okay, so blow hard. And what about Nightlight? I rolled a ten. Ten. All right. So you're also in that last group there. Okay. So Winda, you are first in the initiative order, sir. You blow into this uh this air vent, and you see that this thing is fast like not as fast as you but fast 
as he's skittering and already rounding a corner in the air vents. All right. I'm going to try and do something silly. Okay. Uh, yeah. I love silly things. Let me hear it. <laughs> so I want to get up in the dude's face. And can I, I want to shove the sleeping pill down his throat. <gasps> oh. Okay. Um. So uh, just so you are aware, if you look at the picture that I posted in the chat, which anyone else can see in the intro, if you pay attention, you'll know oh. which one is the golden armored villain. Um, with green glowing lights all over yeah. his body. Um, Take that. But uh, you see that he actually has this helmet that covers his entire face. Oh, that, like that. mandibles that close up. Oh, where, that like I see. Mouth and nose I see like a thing over his eyes, but it looked like his mouth was open. Nope, nope. He has, his, he has like these closed mandibles, and then there is like a single eye that is almost okay. designed to look like that. Uh, yeah. eye. That that's my my misinterpretation of the image. Then all right, so then I'm just gonna onslaught him. <laughs> okay, onslaught. Let's go. Well, you could have come quietly, but now I have to hurt you. Yeah. So just you know. Wind, wind attack. Uh, what is this? Did he attack us or anything? Um, no, he hasn't yet, technically. <laughs> hey, you got a costume? <laughs> <laughs> uh, difficulty seven. <clears throat> That's be a miss. Okay, so my, you, my, my he's coming to fight the bummy. <laughs> <laughs> bring it down, it would bring it down to a four, and I rolled a nine, so miss. Okay, so you, whoom, and this massive explosion of glowing green smoke pff, fills the air vent and actually like yeah. inflates it a little bit, warping the metal sides. That's what I'm talking um, about. And oh. he skitters right past it. He's not a scarab, he's a stink he's bug. Like, he's a little bit faster <laughs> and it seems like he's not super vulnerable. Just put around his back. And uh, that means Paper Man is going and his minions. Paper Man. So uh, I need you to defend Ilong versus Beep. a difficulty of nine. <laughs> right, uh, speed? Speed defense. Is that possible for you? I'm just doing some calculations. Okay. I have trained in skilled defense, so they bring it down to eight. Okay. And I could spend two, and then I'd have to roll an 18. So do you want to do that? No, I'm just going to take the hit. Okay, so you take the hit, and you take four damage as this paper creature scarcely forms of these billowing scrolls that wrap around into a humanoid form, and it lunges and just slice, slice, dealing four damage to you as these tiny, like very razor thin cuts actually lacerate your magical clothing and cut through your feathers to, and, and you start bleeding just a little bit. Um, does that, cut, where do I, where, which pool does that come out of? I'm sorry? Which pool does that damage come out of? Uh, it comes out of your might. So okay. base attacks are speed defense and might pool that is reduced first. Cool. So um, that is the first one. And the second puppet is also going to go for you. And so you're going to take the hit again? Oh, wait, so I've got four armor. Oh, so it does nothing to you then. Okay. Well, wow. I'm going to have to use their special abilities to hit you, I guess. <laughs> Elang's like... Your paper is weak. <laughs> wow. Okay. So uh, first one does nothing to you. Second one comes at you and it starts slicing with these like crazy fast motions. And uh, are you going to take the hit or are you going to roll against it? Is it a difficulty of nine again? Yep. I'm really scared of this one. <laughs> <laughs> um. You know what? Screw it. Elang's dumb and it didn't hurt the first time, so why should it hurt this time? It's just paper. Okay. That's going to be 10 damage. Reduced <laughs> to six. Ow. <laughs> yeah, they have this like rapid slicing sure, sure. thing. Sure, 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 sure. Where sure. each blade strikes you five times. Yep. Wow. Elang's like. It's a, it's a paper wind strike. Mm hmm. 
Ow. And that Ow. one hurts. The I first just, one just kind of like nicked your clothing, but the second one like hurts. Like it really hurts. You didn't think paper cuts hurt this much. And uh, now we're at Scarab. So the Scarab is going to just race as quick as he can toward the Egyptian uh, exhibit of King Tutti Fruity. So uh, that is gonna be- Oh, is Walmart's he just trying to rabbit? Run, rabbit, run. Blowhard, you're up. What are you doing? So I hear the I hear what's going on um, in the exhibit. Mm -hmm. Um, and I hear Lang go, "Ow!" So <laughs> I will go over there, and I see these uh, one of these paper warrior guys, right, covered in uh -huh. blood. Yep, there's two of them right now. Yeah, but only one of them's covered in blood. Um, mm -hmm. And so I will do what I do best. I will blow hard and attack yeah! and attack the the one that you know has bloodied swords. You have an asset to hit these because they're only made of paper. Oh, I'll take that. And are sevens or nines? They are nines to start, so the asset brings <clears throat> it down to an eight. Okay. Um, so it's an eight and these guys are going to be a little tough. Okay, and I can bring it down two to a six. Uh huh. Um, they're made of paper, so they're kind of technically objects. Yeah, they are. Exactly. I'm specialized in breaking objects. You know what? I'll give you another <laughs> asset for that. All right. Um, well, it'd be two because I'm specialized. Oh wait, I think you okay. max out at two though. So, all right, so eight goes down to a seven. Uh huh. And I can get it down to a five. Uh huh. Which I don't feel great about. You got this. You can do it. Um, that's a cracked die. The tension builds. <laughs> 17. Yeah! Uh, so. All right. So you. Whew, I presume you're blowing, right? Yeah, yeah, it's one of my wind attacks, so, so it, it actually does damage. It okay. does four, and a 17 is a plus one, right? So it'll take five. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So Thanks you, to a handy video that we saw recently. I knew that. Um, <laughs> Elam, you see as Blowhard's chest almost inflates a little bit, and, and it just blasts this thing completely apart because... For how much damage they deal and everything, they're pretty fragile. And uh, you just destroyed one of the enemies. Uh, do you have anything else you want to do or that you can do? I think I think that's it. Okay, Nightlight, you're up. Where is Paper Man? Paper Man is currently aloft, being held by Elong. Oh, he's he's <laughs> held by her. I'm about to yes. go Hulk on him. Yep, she just grabbed him by the collar of his white newsy shirt. Let's see. Uh, these are just papers, so I don't feel bad about that. Then uh, against uh, this will be a, a, a Leo Lampley first. I will focus my light into a laser form Ooh, through my okay. Burn them on fire. Just although it is precious knowledge, but it's also trying to kill us. Actually, yeah, I don't know if I want to do that. Yeah, well, F it. Uh, I emit I a blast that does four points of damage. Okay. Oh, it's just force, but I'm going to pretend it's like a laser. Okay, Um. so do you want to, uh, do, do you have to make a roll for that, or do you just do it? That's no, nope. I, I attack a foe within short range using energy that assails its physical form. Uh, I must be able to see it. I emit a blast. Uh, a ray that does four points of damage. Okay, I imagine uh, that because it says you attack them, you probably have to roll. So that would be you can make it. You can use intellect for it though, because it's oh. an intellect ability. And these are nine. Nine. Um, then that's impossible. So, yeah, uh, well, I'll do that. I didn't know that. So yeah, I mean, it just doesn't affect them. I'm gonna give well, you an asset. I'm gonna give you two assets actually. That, does that is a natural twenty like a? 
automatic yeah. success. And yeah, safety. it is. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So if Sorry, you want players in my game. game way. <laughs> but um, I'm going to give you two assets on top of that because uh, one of them is Paper Man is held aloft, so we can't puppet these things super effectively, at least not with one of them being blasted. So it's kind of giving them a little mind blast in the process, and so he's a little hazy. Okay. But then also because you're in a dark room with neon lights giving the uh giving the aesthetic i'm gonna let you pull from the neon lights around a little bit almost in this uh oh what was that video game where you like pulled neon lights out of things to make blasts yeah. oh, i can't remember it Sounds now very cool. but yeah, yeah you basically that does sound cool but i only rolled a seven and <laughs> focus it as part of your ability so it does look spectacular but oh, I, only yeah. a, I only rolled a seven no only roll a seven so you, you you send it flying that way and the neon lights I, flicker a little bit and the light just sort of disperses and flies back. You know what? I'm going to say in canon, that is why Leo never uses his light energy to make lasers and blasts because he didn't want to destroy energy. That doesn't work anyway. Okay. All right. And then, and then, and then I'm going to like, I hate to say it, but I'm going to try to power at least a little bit cowardly take cover because if I get hit I'm smoked okay you can do that that's just wisdom right. <laughs> yeah. um Elong it's your turn why are you doing this paper man you're a hero so I rolled a 20 on my initiative so I get technically a major effect correct I'm sorry I rolled 20 and at 20 on my initiative so I technically do get a major effect um so yeah Oh, uh, actually, no, I'm not going to use it anyway. She's just going to, like, um, take Paperboy and, like, Hulk smash him through the other paper okay. monster okay. and then into a wall. Okay. Go ahead and try to do that. You have the difficulty nine, um, but then you have your appropriate assets and whatnot, your power shifts. So what do you end up having to roll? So I have an edge of six. So that brings it down to seven. And then I will spend an energy. So I have to roll a 19 or a 20. Okay. <sighs> okay. What'd you get? 17. 17. One so short. So close. One short. So close. Not quite. Winda. You're in the you're in the air ducts. And this thing is moving towards that Egyptian egg. Uh, so I'm gonna follow him. Exhibit. You know, okay. uh, I imagine this the ducks are too small for me to get in front of him. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I will use my action this round to essentially create more of my, you know, kind of smoky wind uh, mm -hmm. and have it kind of encompass the area. And what I'm doing here is I'm using my distortion power. Uh, so okay. You can... So you're just trying to hide from him? Yes. Okay, so cool. Following and hiding. Uh, ho hopefully when I can ascertain what he's trying to do, I can either steal it before him or prevent him from getting it. Um, but yeah. Okay. All but. right. So you are trying to uh, get to this before him or trying to see what he's going to use to steal, right? Yeah. Okay. So you are distorted. He's going to have a harder time noticing you. And is that all you do? Yeah. Well, I, all I, right. I, I so can do now follow. Paper Man's turn. Yeah. And he turns and he, he kind of, uh, you know what? You're going to have to make a might check to try to hold on to him still. You're still after Scarab, right, Ted? Yes. Richard Jason. Yeah, yeah, okay. Man, he is. Everybody's so a bad guy. Everybody is a bad guy. Um, that the well, oh, we don't know if the Scarab's big. <laughs> a might check? Nine to maintain hold on him. Would this be considered a strength check? 
Yes. Cool. Well, I've got two effort auto on that. Okay. So that brings it down to seven. Mm -hmm. And then I've got six edge. Okay. Brings that down to five. Okay. I am a big chunky girl. So you gotta roll 15 or better. One. Oh, so uh, not only does he escape from your grasp, he gives you this like almost overly confident, kind of <laughs> disgusting smirk. And he's like, stupid bird lady, you really don't get how this works, do you? And he uh, raises his hands out and I'm gonna let him use his special ability even though he wasn't supposed to be able to as the hindrance. <laughs> so he pulls and all of the paper in the room starts forming into three more enemies. So you have four total paper, uh, paper uh, marionettes that you have to fight now. And Why are you doing this paper man? Now, and he and he kind of looks at you when you say that. And he's like, "At least you call me Paper Man. Everybody keeps calling me Paper Boy. I'm so sick of it. And you know what? Heroes don't make interesting stories. Villains do. Did you ever think about that? You are nothing without the villains." And oh, he oh, sends so like the paper things to attack you guys. So there's four sure. of them, and there's three of you. All right. So each of you is going to have to make a defense check. Ooh. So defense with. A difficulty of nine. And Elang, you have to make two of them. <laughs> it's a speed defense, you said? Uh-huh. Okay, so I got nothing there. Let me check something here real quick. Okay. I'm just going to soak the damage. Yeah, okay. I, I, there's nothing I can yeah. do. Yeah. All right. So, well, I guess we can roll to see if we get twenties, right? Like, no, no, that's actually not. We can roll not. to get a twenty. Uh, All right. Um, hey, whatever. No, I'll take it. No. That's true. There's <laughs> always a. It is impossible. There's an impossible. Uh, Alon's right. actually not taking any damage because these are. I can only do their basic attacks right now. <clears throat> sure. And so they do four damage. Oh. Oh, jeez. Attack. So. All right. I, I've got medium. Hey, I was thinking it was the 10 again. I was like, oh, man. <laughs> All right, so you sunk two of that then. Yeah. Yeah, armor? Um, yeah, he's like kind of having armor. like. Turn. Oh, really? I got to get me some. <laughs> he likes kind of having like this rage moment of like this paper just smacking her in the face after someone called her a big dumb bird. Mm -hmm. And she's like. <laughs> mm-hmm. So you're, you're a, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, an adept. Uh, you could have a. You know, armor built into your ward. What? Mm -hmm. Oh, you're talking about to me? Yeah, my ward. It's a, one of the was one of the uh, adept powers. Mm. I don't have that one. So uh, you, I, like, now... I, I would be somebody's ward. I'm just a kid, man. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, when duh, the scarab like bolts down and knocks out a vent and just falls into one of the exhibits. Sure. And uh, you can, because you're kind of, this is all kind of happening at the same time, it's very fluid. You see it's the e Egyptian exhibit. You see the, uh, the pictures honoring the person who made this discovery of this ancient tomb. And you would recognize that it matches the man that you saw sneaking away. So the guy from the bus is the one that uh, discovered mm. this tomb. And this scarab creature is now approaching the sort of crown exhibit, this uh, cat's eye jewel. And you see this uh, similarly shaped compartment on this armored chest open up. Well, on oh, no. his outfit as he's going towards the jewel. 
if there's any way that I could, you know, get in between, I would be looking to do so. Okay, that will come on your turn. Uh, because that's all he can do is just get there and start reaching for it. For sure. So, blow hard. What are you doing? Well, <clears throat> because these guys are, let's see, they're super hard to hit. Um, we said I'm getting two assets, so a nine goes to a seven. Mm -hmm. um, but still, I want to. I want to try and blow at them to give them hindrances. Okay. Ooh. And just like sustain wind on them. Okay. Uh, with kind of like my push power. Uh, so I'm not really going to try and directly attack them. Okay. I like this idea. I like <laughs> it a lot. So uh, go ahead and give me your might roll. I also like that. And I'm going to give you an extra asset so you've got like three assets going on for this all right um just because i like the idea of it but they're nines right so it brings it down to a six plus whatever you spend or otherwise do yeah um ride the, ride the snake pay the points <laughs> yeah, we don't, we don't, we're running out of points to pay. I so, know. Uh, mm -hmm. It brings it down six to a four. Uh, I can get it down. I can, I can get it down <laughs> to a three. To a three? Wow, that sounds pretty expensive, though. Uh, it, well, it is. If you can succeed at this, I will give your teammates three assets to everything they do. Well, that's wow, a really? That, well, that's a 10. So that succeeds. But we are okay. rapidly running out of points. <laughs> yeah. You are blowing and, really? you're so hard and you see the, the, the papers composing these things are having a, a hard time sort of staying together as this wind whips up in this tornado in the chamber, just sort of like isolated to this exhibit. And they're having a hard time staying together which is making them easier for you guys to hit. So, cool. Nightlight, what are you doing? I'm gonna use my three assets to try and plead with Paper Man and be like, well, if you vi villains make the hero, here's your chance to take on a great villain right now. Scarab's in the other rooms, robbing the exhibit as we speak. You make a great villain. Make your uh, intellect roll to persuade okay. or convince or otherwise. Sure. With your three Amazing. assets, that's a six base. So. All right, I'm gonna pay. I'm gonna. I'm gonna pay to bring it down as much as I can, which I believe is five. So I'm gonna bring it down another two to four. Come on, sixteen. Okay, so you see, as as you're shouting this above the howling wind, mm -hmm. he kind of looks at you. And you see his eyes narrow just a little bit, and he looks at you, and he's like. Can't tell if you're brilliant or foolish. A little bit of both, I like to think. And, I mean, I'm here, aren't I? Uh, and that's all you know that he's done for now. All right. I mean, that up. probably took my. I mean, that was certainly I consider an action. I guess right. Along, you're up. Along would like to activate successive attack. Okay. Which means if I succeed, I auto succeed and um, take one down. Uh -huh. Then I like auto. Then I like it. It becomes like a train. Go for it. You have that asset of three as a base, mm -hmm. which brings it to a six. Before your stuff. Okay, so I have an edge of six. So that brings it down to four. So I need a twelve and above. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I get twelve exactly. So you uh you go for these uh these enemies. And so you you keep making rolls against them, or you just yes, I keep making rolls against them. them, but they count as the same action. Okay, 
So you go for the first one and you slice with your claws and it into these papers that start swirling in the wind. Confetti. And she just, she looks up at Paperboy menacingly and then like turns towards him. Okay. But she gives a slight pause to see if he's going to react to what um, paper, uh, right. Nightlight said <laughs> as she starts to raise her fist towards him. Okay. Did you attack the other? Do you only attack one of the minions? Yeah, I can only, it's like two in a row. So, like, I can attack one, I can make it's like success. It doesn't say. Oh no, if I can take down another foe, so I can make another roll. Ooh, it's but a it's, 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 okay, roll it says one. it says if you take down a foe, you can immediately make another attack on that same turn against a new foe within your reach. The okay. second attack is part of the same action. You can use this ability as melee attacks or ranged attacks. So okay. I don't know if that's like a chaining. It, yeah, it sounds like it's a chaining. So you make another attack roll against the next one. Get her a bag of rats. Do I get to use all the same like? stuff that I already mm-hmm. spent or do I have to spend? Yeah. Oh yeah, those ones are all autos. I didn't spend anything on that. So I just have to get above a 12 again. 14. All right. So you with one and you look to him and you raise your fist and just as this other one near you is kind of starting to decompose a little bit, you grab it and just and it is just scattered in the wind as well. So there's only one minion left that is struggling to maintain which was that first one. And also Paperboy is kind of looking at Paperman, light, and you're not really sure, able to discern yet what he's going to do. Steven, it's, right. it's, it's Paper Man. Yes, it's Paper, Paper Man. Man. <laughs> All right, she'll use her next successive attack to try and take out the next guy. No, that's a nine. So she is like too distracted staring at him. She mm-hmm. kind of bats her hand out to go. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so you're, you're really focused on him at the moment. Winda, you're up. All right, uh, I want to uh, go for the gem. Okay, go for the gem. And uh, make a uh, roll. You're going to have to try to beat him. It's initiative. It's initiative related. All right. And he uh, has a 21 that he gets for his initiative. So you got to beat that, basically. How about a 31? Oh. 19, 19 on the die, and I get automatically four ranks in initiative. Wow, that is crazy. That's if this awesome were a power. television show, if this were a television show, you it would show you staring, watching him reaching for this gem, and it's really intense. And just as his fingers start to brush the surface, it's gone and you're holding it. Oh, that is super sweet. Good visual. So I, I, I would assume like my my you know smoke and stuff is all swirling around the, the room mm-hmm. and he's looking around. Oh yeah, it is. You know, like I'm you know, he's he's beat in on this gem, looking around to make sure, you know, where where I went. And as his hand slowly reaches, like I'm on the other side and I just go, Bink. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> And you are now in this Egyptian exhibit. You see there is a massive uh, sarcophagus behind you, but then there are also several open sarcophagi that line the different wall Uh-oh. around. Uh-oh. And so there's like no. a whole bunch of these uh, like open sarcophagus mummies just very preserved there. Yeah, I'm gonna head back up into the vent. Okay, you head back up into the vent with the jewel. Yep. And you hear this voice almost like beetle hiss at you as this almost robotic sounding um, robotized voice says, that's mine. It belongs to me. That's funny. Looks like I'm the one holding it. And uh, yeah, it's Paper Man's turn. So the rest of you, as you are you're doing that he uh <laughs> he looks at all the swirling paper around and he and he kind of looks at elong and he's hesitant he looks at nightlight he looks at blowhard but then his gaze turns back to nightlight again and he narrows his eyes just a little bit more and he's like 
I'll be watching you. And as he brings his hands in, all of the swirling papers, and he is gone with these papers just sort of fluttering to the ground and then swirling around as well in the wind that wind uh, Blowhard's making. All right. And he's just disappeared for right now. A little paper. Scarab, Scarab is chasing after you. And uh, while he can still see you, I need you to make a uh, might defense for me. Did, did he catch up to me? This is ranged. Wouldn't might, wouldn't ranged be speed? Um, not for this one. Oh, that's not good. Because he <laughs> throws out, he throws out his hand and almost like Spider-Man web comes out from the wrist. But when it like, touches your leg and kind of sticks, you feel your strength starting to be sapped. Ooh. Ooh, it's a sap strength sapping scarab. That could be on the cover of this and issue. Like, you feel that's your cheeks almost pulling scarab. in and sinking. That's, that's gonna be a no. Oh, oh it's like desiccating him? Uh-huh. So, oh, no. Uh, you are going to take uh, 10 might damage. Oh, man. <laughs> And your speed is reduced so that it's going to take your main uh, your main action to move the full distance again. Uh, so remember yeah. how we thought, wow, we were just smacking around those bad guys really easily before. <laughs> Steven totally says up. He's been ripping doping us the whole time. Who <laughs> <laughs> has? Steven. Oh, oh, so, oh, does does my wind oh, armor, uh, you know, reduce this? Uh, it does. It reduces it one, but I'll take. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take every one. yeah. And now he has a tether on you, by the way. So <laughs> this is a very nasty thing he does. Yeah, so a, scare, a scarab chaser. Um. <laughs> so, uh, blowhard, you're up. Paperman is gone. Oh, and by the way, his minion just dissipates completely when he disappears. Do we hear the commotion from the other exhibit? You hear the commotion from the other exhibit. Yes, you do. Is it in the vents or are they still in the exhibit? Um, so you see as I, I don't know if you're moving into the exhibit. I guess I should wait to see that before I, I you know what? I guess I will go back to where I saw him go into the vent. Okay. And I will click my heels together to activate my Achilles heels. Uh huh. And will fly into the vent after uh, after them. Okay, awesome. So you fly. fly into the vent. Um. Meanwhile, Winda, you do see that the scarab actually his beetle carapace on the back has opened, and he has wings that are like buzzing like a bumblebee's that are letting him fly. Mm -hmm. sure. Um, so, uh, you cannot get there blowhard this time, but, uh, between the two of you, you'll meet up this next turn. I, I figured as much, but yeah. I'm coming, um, so Winda, hold on! You hear that through the vents. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are they in the vents together now? They are now? in the vents, um, but coming back. One of them is, yeah. So... Backup is on the way, backup is in the way. I would, I would say incoming. Mm. Oh, so he's, like, you're, you're, he's, you're coming to us? Yeah. Elang oh. just looks up at the vents. With, with that yeah, in I'm mind, here. are there any vents that kind of like branch up from where we are? Yes, there are. So then, it, since he said the, the incoming, I will go up into one of those branches so they can pass under me. Okay. All and right. Go, go ahead. Boom. Um. That's Amazing. not going to require a roll. That's pretty easy to do. And you're a karate expert. You you probably have done some, some kind of nonsense like this for your discipline training, like staying yeah. up in this area. So, uh, Nightlight, what are you doing? So I hear Wind to say, I'm like, you know, basically, like, I'm coming to you. I'm going to uh -huh. use my action, just use my resonance field, basically, to, which is my protective okay. green light, cool. so, which takes an action. So I'm just going to do that and sort of, right. like, just prepare myself for whatever. What does that look like for you? Oh, uh, it's just like sort of like a wavery, uh, scintillating, kind of like the lights behind me. It's just sort of like, 
And it's sort of like a pinpoint. You ever see the Robotech? How they have like uh-huh. the pinpoint defense system, so they just kind of float around, and then if a projectile comes in, they just okay, to that okay, point and turn into like little hired light things. Very nice. Like what about Elong? What is Elong doing? Oh, I can't. Waiting to catch whoever comes out of the vent. He's just like, <laughs> I I cannot get in there. Well, actually, okay. she's more like just holds her fist up in the air. <laughs> okay. And just is like, I'm going to get somebody when they come out. Okay. All right. Cool. So she would cool, like cool. to hold her action. I don't know if you can do that in this game to like smack a bad guy when they come through. I don't know, but we'll say you can because I like that idea. <laughs> so, uh, Winda, you're up. All right. You're so, and slowed, and you feel please. your life draining. Sure. Please remind me what shift does. Shift? The the drug that I can just, you know, kind of... It gives you an edge on every single roll that you make for the next hour. But also you uh, then end up taking 10 damage, intellect damage, whenever you come down from it. So All right. you crash. That, that's, you that's... also have that purple kit that uh that she found too that you don't know what it does i don't remember a purple kit i thought that was the shift no that is something else that is that was shift kind of was but this is oh, what shift was supposed yeah, to be that's right yeah yeah, yeah. I, it was I, from I, the power project wasn't it mm-hmm. i thought uh magpie still had this because i don't have it here oh maybe maybe magpie does i thought she gave it to you but i might be wrong i have a sleeping pill shift and mask with air for an hour. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use my action to get through the grate so that I'm back in the room with them. And as soon as I'm through, I'm juking to the side. Okay. So that it's an open pathway so that when he comes into the room, everybody mm. here is gonna be able to, you know, lay on to him. Okay. He hurts. You, you're using your action to get there then? You told me I had I had to, because I'm slowed. Yep. Yep, I'm just making sure that's what you're, so you're just trying to, boom. all right, gotcha. I need to get into the room so that, you know, the thing follows me all the way here and we can all kind of tag team him. Okay. Or shine right. the dead on him. So it's Scarab's turn, another might defense. And here's where I and go. This on time the... you have a hindrance because he has you tethered. I, I can't. What? It's seven? I can't make yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. That's a fail. Okay. So you take another ten damage, and all the effects Ooh. stay on you. All right. So that that bot that completely has my might all the way out. Hey, welcome. And uh, that then that puts <laughs> points of damage to my speed, right? Uh huh. So how how? I still have some speed, but I'm zero might, six speed. You're impaired. Yep, you are impaired. I've been impaired since yesterday afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> and you feel, once again, this desiccating energy, this almost necrotic energy pulling on you. And you see that with every time that he does this, the thing kind of bulks up a little bit. Mm. Uh oh! Almost like he's eating your energy. Mm. Hey guys, it looks like I'm about to go up and smoke. Oh, nice one! Oh, that is the best pun. If you hadn't already earned an experience this this game, you would have gotten one for that. That's great. Um, of so, course, we uh, do that every night, right? Blow hard. <laughs> so as soon as he goes Don't underneath of under- me. I'm just going to poke my head down and blow and just try and take away this controlled flight and just push him through the vent towards everyone. Okay. Um, go ahead and make a mic check for me. His difficulty is seven. All right. Um, and I'm going to give you an asset because you're dropping dropping on him like so, unexpectedly. All right. So that's a 15. I brought it down to a four. Quickly wrap, okay. running out of points. And, and because uh, you forcibly moved him, you break the tether. Yes. So really broken, and you guys see bursting out of this uh, this air duct 
this and you see this armored golden beetle man who's now even buffer than he used to be <laughs> yeah. and he has the back open and he has these wings that are fluttering like a bee's wings or dragonflies so or and it pushes beetle. him one immediate distance as well okay Away, is, so uh, automatically into Elong. so Elong, prepared action automatically into her fist <laughs> all right make What's that the difficulty? check Seven. for an attack is seven Your difficulty is yeah. seven so but i bring that down to a five because blowhard blasted him into you okay so that brings it down to a four that's 18. okay and that's actually uh you do an extra two Ooh. points of damage 14 oh, yeah. points of damage 14. <laughs> so um, you guys <laughs> so, oh yeah, she's like fifteen food. feet tall right now, or something, right? It's like real big, isn't it? Yeah. This is this is literally the sort of thing that if this were a show, it would show in slow motion. Oh and yeah. It would show it at actual speed. So <laughs> in slow motion, we see Elon <laughs> totally. smashing into this armored creature as it starts flying, punching it onto the floor and denting the armor a little <laughs> bit in the chest. What we actually see is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because it was so fast. And uh, that is your prepared action. So, wow. Nightlight, like, what are you doing? Did you say Winda had like a thing attached to him that's growing? Uh, no, it's not growing anymore. It's broken. But you see uh, that he has like this tendril of what looks almost like spider web or something that is still kind of hanging a little bit broken off of his like out of his wrist. Well. It sounded technical to me, so I'm going to see if my quantum electronic uh, trained knowledge will help me at least like get that off. Or just check him to make sure he's okay or it's not like gonna, like he's still connected or, you know, ba I don't know what's going on. Um, so Windows just... still in the vent. Windows still in the oh, vent. I thought he flew out. He flew out. out and flew to the side. Oh, you flew to the side. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so he's out and away. And he looks, you see Windows' entire face looks sunken. Like, he hasn't eaten in weeks. Yeah, I want to go and like just make sure that thing's pale. off him. You see and... these black veins kind of pulling up at the bottoms of his face from his neck. Like, he discover discovered heroin while he was in that vent. And yeah, I want to make sure that thing is <laughs> broken and there's no remaining, like, stuff attached to him or whatever. Oh, yeah, he has I nothing can't. attached to him. And okay. Windows holding a jewel, an orange jewel with a black, like, slice in in the middle of it okay it looks like a cat's eye oh uh, use your use your light powers and shoot light through it you think sure all right sure i'll try it i'll just i'll be like it's an oh, idea. leader he knows what's best one. i will just put it like my hand towards it and just put a bunch it's of scintillating like <clears throat> okay when you no. put your power into it when he takes it like i'm not gonna I, I'm not gonna fight him. I'm barely moving at this point in time. Oh yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to. No, 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 no. I, I will not. I will not resist uh, when you reach for it. I just, just don't let him get it. I won't. Window, and I'll, I'll stay near. You know, I'll stay near him, and, and that shield stays up for a minute. So, I'll start to put myself between Winda and Scarab as well while I'm doing that. So that okay, you are an adept that put your power into this gem. Yes. So you trigger yeah. the effect. Oh, okay. So um, you do this, and you well, uh, right. he is, so you guys leader. watch as <laughs> Nightlight projects something, and this light, boom, and your entire mind is flooded with these images of like thousands of lives of different wow. pharaohs, and this knowledge just floods you. This scarab is your guardian. This scarab is your avatar. And in a flash, you resurrect all of the mummies in that chamber, as well as the T-Rex skeleton and the dinosaur skeletons in the dinosaur exhibit. All of them are under your control for one minute. Okay. Uh, under my control? <laughs> under your control. <laughs> oh, wow. So, I, and I am aware of this? You are aware. Can I do anything right now or do you all want to wait? All of a sudden. Yeah. I mean, I, I assume that was my action. Can I do anything? Yep, that was your action. You can tell him to do something if you want. Uh, 
I have always liked Terrence the T-Rex. I come every year and see him since I was a little kid. I love the show. And Penny the Pioneer, too. But knowing that, I would just, because I'm a, still a kid and a little overwhelmed, just have, and thrilled, just will have Terrence, like, move his head and go, like, <laughs> just once, like, just to scream and everything. Oh, Not move hurt. or attack anybody. It just, like, <laughs> looks animatronic almost. So, and, you hear- and then I, oh, go ahead. You hear screams as is just like trumpets from the lobby. And you hear these like twangs and clangs as the moving T-Rex is breaking the things it's hanging from right now. And I'll have the mummies sort of start to converge on Scarab just menacingly, like, you know, kind of like hone in on him. Okay. So and that's the it, and then, and that's are it. shambling into this exhibit. Yeah, just to like sort of all come at him, like you know, same speed and everything, just menacingly to scare okay. him, or maybe get him to back down. It does take a while for them to shamble, but yeah. it'll take a while for him to get yeah. up after that punch too. And then I imagine he just falls down to his knees as well, because it's like that was quite a rush and excruciating, you know, right? All sorts of crazy, overwhelming, and just is like, oh my god. And that's it. And in fact, the mummies start wrapping him up with their bandage power oh. that they were going to use against you guys. Okay. And so I like that. <laughs> he is now just wrapped up and cannot move, cannot use any of his powers, just kind of wiggling weakly there, kind of groaning a little bit because, oh my gosh, he got smashed into the floor by a giant bird lady. Um, when that happens, is it possible that Alang like reaches into her body again and pulls out Katie's mobile phone? You can absolutely <laughs> do that. And like shows his p- picture, and then shoves it in his face. Good for the gram. And is like, I know who you are, and then tries to rip off his mask. Okay. Um. So uh, you rip off the mask, and it almost comes off like a carapace, and there's like the this like sticky stuff in between like his Ew. skin and the mask, like mm. it was crafted in there. But you see a, oh, you see It doesn't like pull his up. face off, does it? No. Oh, God, thank you. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I thought you were saying. I'm like, oh, God. Oh, no, it's just my nails, my nails. <laughs> like an exoskeleton. Oh, God. That, uh, at any Lang will say, you use the power of our forefathers for evil. And he's like, no. I use the power of our, my forefathers to try to meet my destiny until he stole it. And he... Your destiny was there of your crime ruined today, Scarab. <laughs> this belongs in a museum. And just as he starts to curse at you, the mummies wrap him up so he can't sleep. Mm-hmm. Don't kill him. Don't, don't. just hold him. I like the kind authority. of as soon as soon as like um, no, as soon as uh, not like says that Elaine kind of turns her head and is like, no, 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 it doesn't. <laughs> it was a humorous was... reference. Never mind. <laughs> and she's like, <laughs> these belong to our people. And she like grabs like the the villain underneath her arm and is like, I'm ready to go. It's like, let's go home. Okay. We can have a chat with him at the HQ. All right. <laughs> So you're just carrying him away yeah. as all of you carry away the scarab to your hideout for questioning and oh, I'm going to go back through the, the gala on the way there where Terrence was still doing. At least let everybody know, like, don't worry. The crime here has been ruined today by the crime ruiners. Uh, the exhibits are safe. As you shout and, uh, that, you see that everything is in ruins. The uh, the <laughs> pictures have now fallen and broken. Oh. <laughs> and uh, you see most of the people are gone or hiding. Some people are poking their heads out of the gift shop. Your mother kind of like peers over the Holding up desk, pinwheels. looks. So is there is there any kind of avian aspect of the uh, the museum? An avian aspect? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So the fact that Magpie wasn't here, I will get something from the gift shop 
Mm, okay. Yes. For her. Okay. Um. So not all the crime was ruined after all. <laughs> uh, I'll come back. I was time. distracted. I didn't notice. I'll come back and pay for it. But you know. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. People have been stolen, and then like one bookshelf. Like I feel like it. Come back. The the the, the person will just be like, just take it, just take it, please, just take it. And Lang oh. turns around to the crowd and is all like, "Winter, get the pinwheels." And then like, <laughs> is all like, "Pinwheels do the body good. The catering business here is awesome." And then just like, <laughs> <laughs> and you see ben. just from behind the desk this little. <laughs> 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 so we'll make sure that we get the pinwheels as well. And you guys uh, take him back. You can take him away. The police are now swarming outside. Um, and uh, Paperman is conspicuously absent for him from his reporting for today. That's fine. We know where he works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have and, a pair of uh, handcuffs. I'm gonna put them on the scarab. I, or maybe he doesn't need it if he's wrapped up by mummies. He he's so wrapped up you could you'd have to dig him out and cut him <laughs> loose just to get him handcuffed. And, you are uh, right, window though. It's like a nasty whatever whatever he put on you. Uh, yep, I feel like I'm gonna die. <laughs> Here, have a bottle of water. You go stay hi- you gotta like, stay hydrated. I gotta ever put an arm under window and kind of like help him buddy carry him out. Okay. Uh, he absolutely will not <laughs> uh, will not fight that that help at all. You did good, man. You did good. Now, if we could just get you off those drugs. They're legal. <laughs> it doesn't mean they're good for you. I think they are. Come on, you can ride. You can ride on the back of my bike. Lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Your own tots. I could, I could take public transportation. <laughs> you could, but you'll, a, you'll just end a, up, you're gonna end up sitting in someone's used gum. And it's always the same bus, <laughs> and it becomes our like superhero. Yeah, like, the same it's, driver. Yeah. It's our safe word too, isn't it? So we know that we're really who we say we are. Public transport. <laughs> Say I love public I transport like... and, and the proper expenses, and it sucks. <laughs> yeah, I believe right. Wasn't that what we decided on? Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, you guys make your way back to your hideout and everything, and uh, get your long rests in place. So we'll just oh, do that now, God. real quick. Oh, Everybody my God. A full I... night's rest. Nothing eventful happens on Sunday <laughs> night. <laughs> I feel like we've gone through the last three sessions in like two hours. <laughs> uh, it was like a day and a half. It felt very superhero y to me. I loved yeah. it, man. I thought um, it was sweet. Also, uh, you, Katie and Leo, know that um, school is canceled on Monday for oh, a great yeah. day. So they actually have Monday off. Oh, Several sweet. of your classmates are going to this new theme park that is recently built. Mm. Oh. Uh, it's, it's, it's entitled, it's called Gross World. Gross and world, basically like a uh, Six Flags where you can get slimed and stuff. Like oh, that. really? Yeah, it has that orange goop and everything. Um, and uh, that was actually me in real life being excited. Is that funny? <laughs> <laughs> We're taking a couple of days, right? So, Man, unless yeah. there's crime to be ruined. You guys want to go to Gross World tomorrow? <laughs> we don't have school. I don't know, again? Window looks like he's I'm sure already Magpie there. I would want to go. <laughs> <laughs> mm. They have all kind of junk food and everything, too. Funnel cakes, elephant ears, the big cones of french cool fries. things that spin and go round and round <sighs> and round. I think we earned a day at Gross World. Right, Cramerooners? I, I think we earned a couple of days of not Yeah, day. you got me, Blair. That's just me. <laughs> Elaine picks up Scarab Man. What do you think, Scarab Man? And you just kind of get this wiggle and <laughs> Do we have like, is there a, um, not a trophy room, but like a, just a secure room in the A-listers headquarters? Yes. I will put the gem in there. You mean like, the crime we... ruiners headquarters? Yeah. Oh, is, is it official? <laughs> okay. I didn't want to be presumptuous. 
Nope, that is your hideout yeah. now. You I'm not sure how it. secure it is at this point, but you know. <laughs> well, you know, I figured there's a room where they put like dangerous stuff that they might have. Put. Um, do we do we need to like remove Paperboy's access to this place? Definitely. I don't think he's too bright. The pass, the pa his password was his date of birth, so it shouldn't be <laughs> difficult to fool him. <laughs> For all that paper, he doesn't seem very well read. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> so is this and where we're cutting, Stephen? This is where we're cutting. All yeah, right. Full all rest. right. Good night. Everything happens, and nothing dangerous happens at all for a whole day thereafter. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> it just well, doesn't seem like Castapolis with that. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks everyone for watching along, and thanks for playing, and of course. Uh, Steven, thanks for running the game. It's always a blast. And until next time, stay nerdy. Stay nerdy.